Hello from Power BI Consulting Services. Uh, Super excited to be here with you guys today. We put out a little poll where we ask you guys, what sort of content do you want to hear about or learn more about? And in that poll, we've gotten about 70% of you guys saying you wanted to learn a little bit more about some tips and tricks or things you can do inside of the Power BI service or Power BI online. So without further ado, I'm actually going to kind of take you through um, a little bit of that, sort of what are some of the things you can do inside the service. But I'm going to start really quickly before I even pivot there to the actual Power BI desktop version. And I'm actually going to go under just general settings really quick because I think that's an important place to start, even though a lot of this we're going to show you that's actually capable inside of the service too. Um, so this is very much specific to the current report, which I think is important to the current file settings. And here are some really important filters that I think as you publish reports to the service are important and probably many of you guys know about, but let's go through it really quickly. So persistent filters don't allow end users to save filters on this file in the service. So oftentimes we get this question so much, hey, my report looks weird. What's going on with it? Um, all the numbers are off, you know, <laughs> all sorts of questions from folks who are out here in the service. And I'll show you a little bit of an example of when that could happen, where they're basically filtering the report down. And when they filter that report down, it's defaulting those filters as their primary view when they go into the report going forward. So don't allow persistent filtering. Really straightforward. Strongly encourage if you've got filters inside of your report that you click this specifically if you're getting a lot of questions from your end users on why things aren't showing up the right way. And the reason is that they filter the report down and they didn't reset to default to kind of see the report in its normalized state without filtering. So here, hide the visual header and reading view. So if folks are in the reading view, do you want to hide the visual headers? Um, this one's default checked from, from when I popped in here, use the modern visual header with updated, updated styling options, change the default interaction from cross filtering to, from cross highlighting to cross filtering. Um, so this will kind of just change how, when you click a visual, is it going to highlight the display across the other bar charts and graphs in the visual, or is it going to just dynamically cross filter? This is another one we get asked a lot. How do we prevent end users from exporting any data from the service? We don't want folks to be able to consume the underlying data. And this is exactly where you define that. So depending on what you want the export functionality to be for your reports, you can dictate, dictate that right here. Uh, so again, filter pane. So do you want folks to actually see your filter pane? So hopefully my arrow is displaying here on screen, but this filter pane where you're defining some filters inside of this report, maybe it's you only want to see the last five years of data. So you default it inside this filter pane. Do you want folks to have access to that and or change things inside of the filter pane too? So just what's that filtering experience look like here where you're applying generally in this filters pane, you're applying specific criteria or business rules. Do you want that to be visible uh, to your end users? So cross report drill through, allow visuals in this report to use the drill through targets from other reports. So do you want that functionality to be added inside of the report as well? A couple of tooltip integrations and summarization functions as well. And then some query limits. So do you want to kind of restrict the amount of sort of functionality available. So visual queries have different timeout memory limits, uh, specifically in the service. One of the things we found is that you can see those things start to, I won't say clunk out, um, but <laughs> definitely it can. And so do you want to kind of limit the sort of querying simulations and functionality inside of this report as you're kind of using it in the service? Um, there are things that we kind of do here. Uh, for example, if we do see that happening, you know, are there any things we can do inside of the model to help uh, end users sort of continue to view the reports in the service? Or do we need to upgrade this to a premium capacity uh, workspace so that any re so that this report who may have like lots of complex logic or query requirements associated with it can still be displayed and viewed uh, online for your end users? And so generally, uh, premium capacity for that particular workspace where these heavy compute reports are will be the most beneficial way to do things. 
All right, so there's just a general way to kind of go through some of the settings inside of desktop. Now I've pulled this report up uh, here on screen and you will see that I'm gonna actually take you guys through some just general functions here inside of the service that I think are helpful um, for folks who are coming out here just to consume or view your reports. So uh, just a couple of things, you can share the report here. So you can define those settings here where you say um, anyone with a specific, uh, specific people can access it, anyone inside of your organization or people who have existing access to this workspace can view it too. And then you have a final setting here, allow recipients to build content with this associated report. So even if you don't allow folks to export the data from these visuals uh, and export the data so that they can kind of consume or use it throughout various other reports, uh, you can allow users to potentially build their own content off of it. So here it gives you a little bit of detail on, on that as well as just sharing capacity of, of this particular report. So this is sitting inside of a workspace. As you can see, it's called this YouTube Analytics Workspace. And so in this case, I'm actually sharing the individual report itself through a link and you can define who's gonna get access to that here. And you can just copy that link and send it off to anyone who is inside your organization that you want to grant access to the report as well. So here gives you, if you're sort of a, haven't given the ability, right? So I'm a, an admin of this workspace, so have full capacity. You can download the reports here. You can manage permissions and you can have the ability to kind of determine where this report gets embedded or used. Um, these things aren't the most important, but I'm going to go into the settings section, which I do believe is important. It does give you the ability to kind of select the endorsement. So depending on, you know, what level of scrutiny this reporting environment and or this report's been given, you can kind of define that um, here. So if it's a certified report, you know, it's really kind of met um, some really high standards as it relates to how you define viewing and showing reports in your organization. You guys can define that here and kind of um, you can learn a little bit more about this as well, too. But again, help coworkers find your quality content by endorsing this report. So if it's been through a bit of rigor, uh, I'd say if you're kind of testing or playing around and you don't want to kind of set uh, this as any sort of particular endorsement type, you can keep it on none, right? There's uh, sort of the default that it sits on. But if you're doing enterprise reporting and you want to give folks a level of um, a level of confidence in what's been done you can help define that by these endorsement levels uh, so again you can kind of see here uh, some of the same exact criteria that we would have shown you in that desktop version so don't allow users to save their filters display report pages as tabs along the bottom so the same experience you see in the service where the pages here one two three and four are kind of along the bottom of the page as an example you can make that a default setting. Uh, you can again hide the visual headers, uh, change the default interactions, and you can allow users to change filter types and display the filter pane, right? So if I hit cancel here, you will see the filter pane is displayed here. Nothing's there, uh, but you can change the settings to allow or not allow users to access that filter pane. So again, here in the settings section, you can kind of define that along with various other um, sort of integration points that I think are pretty relevant, specifically some of the ones around security and sharing data, as well as filtering down data inside of your report. And here, choose the data types you can allow users to export. So again, if you don't want folks to export anything, you hit this none icon and they can't. Otherwise, when they come out here and they hit the three ellipses, um, you'll get this export data option and have the ability to export. But again, if you want that setting turned off, it is under the settings options here. So explore this data. Again, you can go in here and say, OK, I want to see a count of based on the published date. Let's do a count of. And before I go there, let me delete out a quarter day and month. Let's do that. We're going to keep this fairly simple, nothing super fancy for the sake of um, sampling it and let's do a count of the title actually is what we're going to do that would be my issue all right 
Okay, then. Okay, let's get this out of there. Let's take the title as the value, not that. So let's do the title as the value. Do a count and then we'll do just, I'm sorry, based on the month. We'll ignore everything else for the sake of this, right? Because we're kind of just looking at the month level because it gives you a little bit of insight onto on average when things are getting done. Um, so here you can see kind of, uh, you can have the ability directly here inside of the service to visualize your data and or save these changes if you want, right? So pretty cool function directly inside the report. If there are certain views that you want to see that aren't visibly displayed inside the report, you can go in and you can add those into the report and or just explore the data and get some additional insights from it that way. Next, get insights. So very similar, it does a lot with trending. So on this page, it's just a happenstance and I'm on a page that has quite a bit of um, sort of trending integration here. And you can kind of see that it's giving you just some insights and or uh, key anomalies associated with your data. Um, so I won't go into each of these individually, but you can see that it's giving you some additional details that may or may not be relevant to you from a reporting standpoint, but it doesn't hurt to take a look at each of these individual items. It's touching on anomalies, trends, and KPIs. Uh, and if there are any top options, you can see that as well. Next, you can subscribe to the report. Uh, so this is just another way for users. I kind of recommend this for folks who want to keep your team engaged. So you can go out here and create a subscription associated with this such that um, on a schedule that you kind of define, this report goes out. All right, so you can see this here. You can do an hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, or after a refresh has occurred up to once a day. And so this gives your users the ability to be notified of updates that are occurring inside of the reporting that you find to be most important and keep folks engaged, right? So no better way to keep folks engaged than to set up a subscription to the report so that they can go out here and get updates on it automatically so that you don't have to kind of push those out on a schedule. They just automatically get those updates. The next thing is just giving yourself the ability to kind of make um, updates over time. So, or get notified of updates that occur over time, which I think is super helpful and important too. So you can see it kind of highlights the options, but once you get to a certain hours watched or number of, um, net new subscribers or some other KPI that you're super interested in tracking, you can define that and um, get a notification on it. So when this value changes from 359, you can get it. When this value changes to maybe it's 25,000, you can get it and then you can define how you get that notification if you prefer email or Teams, right? So a pretty cool feature that allows you to set alerts and notifications for yourself inside of the service uh, so that you can uh, kind of get those updates to yourself. And I say this is really good for folks as you're kind of doing trainings with end users, kind of giving them the ability to kind of set alerts and, and get updates on the, the data and reports that are um, being leveraged across the company. And then last but not least, for folks who are kind of managing these reports, I think the usage metrics are super important. This is going to be a pretty boring one here, which is going to show, <laughs> show myself, uh, but it's going to show you sort of your most recent views. It's going to show you again, it'll give you a little bit of details on what's displaying here and whatnot, but it's going to give you the uh, ability to kind of dissect the consumption of reports inside of your tenant. And I find this to be super important. So if there are reports that are kind of heavily used inside of the company, this is where you're gonna be able to see that information. And we find that to be super helpful uh, and give you some insights into maybe what content is being leveraged the most. If there's a report that's never viewed, for example, maybe you wanna get rid of it, especially if it has a lot of overhead to it, meaning there's some manual components taking you guys a ton of times, time to, time to implement, maybe you, go ahead and get rid of it. So it gives you a little bit of insight there. 
A few other things that I do think are relevant to kind of view the ability to create a favorite so that it pops up on your home screen in your favorites section. Uh, so you can see here the YouTube analytics report pops up because it's officially in my favorites section of my uh, homepage inside of PowerBI.com. Uh, another way for you to kind of fit to screen. So if you want to actually be able to see this in full screen, gives you the ability to do that. If there are other functions that you want to so fit to width as an example, and then any other sort of settings you want, um, here you can, right? So high contrast, if you want to change the contrast of your report, it gives you the ability and kind of the function to, to do that as well. All right, and then commenting, you're also able to add comments inside of here as well so that other folks and users in this reporting environment can kind of see those. So maybe you have questions or feedback or you, you know, want a, an enhancement, you can put that comment in here and that will, will kind of persist through as well. All right, well, that's a little bit on the tips and tricks side of the Power BI service. Hopefully you find this to be super helpful for you and your team. If you have questions, let me know. I'm going to go through a lot of the content that we put in that little poll that we sent out. So there's probably going to be some additional integration points, additional content that I toss out there as it relates to what you guys kind of wanted to hear more about. If I didn't touch on something and you want me to hit on it, let me know. Uh, for example, the Power BI admin panel. Uh, maybe you want to hear something or see something in that space, whatever it might be. Just give us a shout. Let us know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you guys for continuing to watch and consume our content. Uh, looking forward to the next session and we will talk to you soon.